Oh, hey guys, what's up? Manny here. Welcome back to Leonidio. If there is one disadvantage of being here instead of at home, it is that I don't have access to my usual recording facilities, my studio, so to say. And I've tried to record outside of the apartment where there is a nicer scenery, but there is also a lot of background noise and admittedly the weather is not that good at the moment. And when I try to record inside of the apartment, I, get, I can get rid of all the background sound. But as you can see, the scenery is kind of boring. So I thought I'll try something a lot of YouTubers do, and that is putting some interesting footage to their speech, which is not necessarily related to the speech itself. This is often done with gameplay footage. I don't know, maybe you have seen some videos like that. But since I'm more of a climber rather than a gamer, I thought, man, why not just put some of the climbing footage that I've made recently to the background of my speech. So what you're going to see is this which is an attempt of yet another 8B of the Twin Cave sector called Morchi that I tried recently and I think the Uncut Descent video should be out quite soon. Definitely tell me what you think about this method in the comments down below. Alright, so let's jump into the actual topic of the video. The trip goes on, the projects are getting harder and that's why I thought I'll quickly elaborate on a topic which is quite important when it comes to sending projects that are truly at your limit and that is conditioning. And when I say conditioning, I mean factors regarding your own body, for example weight. I will not talk about external conditions like temperature, humidity and stuff like that in this video, although these can be quite important as well. A lot of climbers have this mindset that something like a bad day just happens completely randomly and thus they blame fate if it occurs, just as they think they were lucky when they had a good day. But in fact there is a number of measures we can take in order to increase the chance of a good day drastically. And the most important ones I will discuss now. Under the following assumptions, you have the project wired perfectly already. There is no time to get even more general fitness through training and you've got some good, decent skin to work with. Under these circumstances I can think of four factors that will determine your performance on any given day and these are in the order of their importance, in my opinion, body weight, mental sharpness, restedness and of course special substances like alcohol, caffeine, THC and stuff like that. In this video I'm going to take a closer look at body weight and I'm planning on doing follow up videos about the other ones. Alright, so let's get into it. It's an inconvenient truth in climbing, the lighter the better. Thus, the goal is to become as light as possible for your sand go, but without influencing your ability to perform or your health in a negative way. The number one thing that you can do to become as light as possible short term is cutting out salt from your diet. I've made a video about this topic some time ago, if you want you can check it out here. Since salt is holding water onto your body, cutting it out from your diet should result in a significant loss in unnecessary water weight, depending on genetics and previous salt consumption. And the weight loss should be somewhere around 1 to 3 kilos. Some of you might argue now, come on, 1, 2 kilos, how should you ever notice that difference? In this case I can tell you that you probably don't climb at your limit yet. If you're operating at your true limit, knowing your project like the back of your hand, you will notice things like your shirt, every single additional quick draw you carry up when equipping the route again and again, and whatnot. And even if it's only a placebo, it's just good to know that you're as light as you can be when you begin your next attempt. You will give it everything. And on the other hand, if you're feeling like a big sack of potatoes while tying your knot already, then you probably won't even bother to give it the necessary 110% since you think it makes no sense anyway. So back to the salt, if you want to have the full effect, my advice would be cut out salt from a diet at least 5 days before the critical day. Another way to spare some weight is to actually not carb it up like crazy the day before. Just like salt, also carbs hold a significant amount of water on your body and if your stores are only two thirds full instead of 100% carbed up, you will be lighter. But of course, cutting on carbs before a day filled with sports activity is essentially playing with fire. Although you'll be lighter, you'll definitely also have less total energy available, which means that you may only be able to give it two goes instead of the usual three, so you better send your stuff quickly. 
On the other hand, if you're completely carved up, you'll have more goes available, but you'll be heavier on the first few, until that stuff burns off and leaves your body in the form of CO2 and water. Which leads me to the next point. Take a piss every time before you start an attempt. It sounds silly, but as described before, if you're using your muscles during a try, carbs are burned and a lot of oxidative water is set free, ready to leave your body. It's heavy as hell, so let it leave your body for the next try. Another interesting thing which works quite well in my experience is emptying the glycogen stores of your legs the day before the critical day by doing a little evening run or something similar after your last meal of the day. It will make you lighter in general and since it involves a body part which is quite neglectable when it comes to hard climbing, one can do this without worrying that there is not enough energy left. And finally, I want to mention another quite obvious thing, have a light breakfast, don't overdo it. Have something that is easily digestible and doesn't sit in your stomach for hours. Ideally some fruit combined with lots of water, at least that's what works best for me. We will talk about this again when discussing the point of mental sharpness and clarity. Of course, this means that you should start with trying your project quite early in the day, which is the better choice anyways in my opinion, since you will feel more fresh and more ready to crush than in the evening when a lot of not only physical but also mental energy has already been expended. So to quickly recap this here, the 5 ways to manipulate your body weight short term for the better. Cut out salt, do not carve it up completely the day before, always take a piece to get rid of oxidative water, have a light breakfast, don't overdo it and try emptying your leg glycogen with a quick evening run the day before. You can check which of these methods works best for you by simply using your scale. And finally I want to add that whatever methods you use to drop your weight short term, it is very important that you pre-cook your post-workout meal on the critical day, so that you can instantly refuel your energy stores once the session is over. Otherwise you will set yourself up for sickness, especially if you're entering the day with not fully padded stores already. I've already talked about this previously. And that's already it for this video my friends, next time I'll have a little talk on mental clarity and sharpness as I like to call it. If you've got something from these tips, please be sure to drop some likes and opinions in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for your attention and I'll see you in the next one, bye.